Hi, I'm Alexander Holinsky, and I'll be presenting our paper, Reducing Drift and Structure from Motion Using Extended Features. So nowadays, it's gotten pretty easy for us to capture 3D models of everyday scenes. It's just a matter of pulling out our smartphone and capturing a short video clip. Once we have the video, we can throw it into our favorite reconstruction algorithm, and it usually gives us something pretty reasonable. And this is all thanks to Structure from Motion and SLAM, which are the methods that track the camera position in 3D. Over recent years, these methods have gotten to be way more accurate and robust. But there are still some limitations. If your object is too large, or if the camera is too close to the subject, or if your field of view is too small, chances are you'll run into some pretty heavy drift, which is the accumulation of small errors over time. For example, if you wanted to use your smartphone camera to capture a whole building facade, you'll often end up with a very skewed reconstruction, which here we're showing from above, that doesn't match the real building structure. In fact, for some scenes like this, no matter how hard you try, it's nearly impossible to get a good reconstruction without changing your camera setup. In our paper, we've developed a method for reducing drift in scenes with man-made structure, making it possible to get accurate structure in many of these nearly impossible to reconstruct scenes. Normally, structure from motion establishes constraints between pairs of frames which mutually observe the same part of the scene, by finding and matching feature points from each frame. Our method addresses drift through what we call extended features, which can be matched across frames that see totally different parts of the scene, allowing us to enforce pose constraints on pairs of frames that are arbitrarily distant. We demonstrate two examples of extended features. For rotational drift, we use vanishing points as extended features. Even though frames may not observe the same parts of the scene, vanishing points are estimated per frame and can be easily associated across frames in a video sequence, providing drift-free global constraints on camera rotations. Without rotational drift, you can see that there's no longer any bending in our reconstructions, but they still don't look right because of translational or scale drift. For this, we use global planes as our extended features. For each frame in the video, we can identify points which belong to global planes in the scene and use these to constrain the position of the reconstructed camera. For instance, if this is our first frame and we start walking around the building, very soon our frames won't be observing the same part of the scene, so there won't be any shared feature tracks, and thus no direct constraints between this pair of frames. However, if we're able to figure out that the feature tracks in these two frames belong to the same global plane, that gives us a very strong constraint on the relative position of these two frames. And in fact, these planes don't even need to be real visible planes. They can be a slicing plane of the building, like a row of windows, which allows us to impose scale and height constraints between frames on totally opposite sides of the building. These techniques allow us to drastically reduce drift in a lot of these man-made scenes, making it possible for us to get really high-quality reconstructions of scenes like this, which would otherwise be nearly impossible to capture. So if you're interested in hearing more, please check out our full talk for more details. Thanks.